Jai Hind, Jai Bharat, and welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achint. Every time there's a crash in the Indian Air Force aircraft fleet, there are always questions being asked with regards why it happened, what happened, and how can we prevent it in the future. These are all valid questions that the general public asks. But we need to also look at a little bit of a professional outlook from the Indian Air Force itself and from someone who's actually been the Director General of Flight Safety, Air Marshal G.S. Bedi, who's here with us today this, uh, for this show to discuss the latest crash which took place in Arunachal Pradesh and, of course, a little more beyond this particular incident into flight safety and the reasons behind this crash. This and many other crashes that have taken place. Sir, hello and welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much, Avi. It's a pleasure to be here. So, to begin with, you know, uh, of course, safety is paramount. There's no question about it. When we sit in a car, also, we wear a seatbelt. So, you know, I hope we all do. And uh, we also wear helmets when we when we are riding bikes and everything like that. Uh, how important is flight safety, sir, uh, with regards to flying? Because whatever we are doing in the Indian Air Force is, at the end of it, uh, aggressive flying. I won't call it aggressive against anybody, but it is a practice of aggressive flying. Uh, how, how does flight safety fit into the entire game within the Indian Air Force? Thank you uh, very much, Adi. This is very important. Uh, and generally, people you know tend to get confused, and even our youngsters. Uh, it gives a feeling as if operational efficiency and safety are uh, contradictory to each other. That is, you cannot achieve one at uh, you know you can achieve one at the cost of other. You know they both can't go together. Now I I have I differ on this view uh, entirely because uh, uh, let's uh, you know start from the very basics. Firstly. The crash that you mentioned uh, in Arunachal Pradesh, the inquiry is uh, still on. You know, the basic information is out that uh, Cheetah uh, aircraft crashed. Uh, it was returning because of bad weather, it really reached its destination. So I don't know whether weather played any role that will come out uh, subsequently. But many aircraft have been lost in similar uh, circumstances. You know, the Air Force inquiries are not in public domain. Uh, but uh, when we look at the civil uh, aircraft accident, similar, which probably we will talk about it uh, in a while, you will find that uh, similar kind of things happen. Bad weather, mountain terrain, uh, you know, an aircraft uh, with not so, uh, which is not so well equipped, etc., etc. Uh, but coming back to your question, you know, uh, what happens is, unfortunately, we uh, take that, okay, we have to fight a war. We have to launch certain aircraft, you carry uh, certain package, etc. Uh, flight safety is something which is not uh, embedded in. You know, take the case of you driving from here to airport. What do you cater for? You cater for traffic, you cater for everything, but you never cater for an accident. Accident is not a default setting. It is not supposed to happen. Because it is not supposed to happen, we never think about it. And unless an accident happens, it remains an impossibility. And nobody seems to think that it can uh, happen to me. You know, uh, there is a, a psychology behind it. They, you know, very beautifully drawn that uh, uh, we always discard uncomfortable uh, thoughts. And the way your mind calculates probability is very different. And they give example, they say, okay, since we are talking of road accidents, uh, statistics have it that uh, on Delhi roads or in Delhi NCR, they say about five people uh, die in road accidents every day. This is there uh, in, in Google. So 20 million approximately if the population, you know, a guy thinks somebody starts, he says one in four million chances that you will meet in the next accident today. You will discard it off. You say, no, 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 far, very remote. But the same person, let's say, goes to a lottery stall. And there is a bumper prize of 1,000 crores. He will buy a ticket, though the chances of winning may be 1 in 27 millions. But his mind calculates that chances of... he And he, what feeling does he have? Why does he spend money to buy it? Because he has a feeling that he may be the one who wins it. So the mind calculates chances of 1 in 27 million being better than 1 in 4 million because it suits uh, me. It suits uh, my thinking. So what happens is when you drive from here to, let's say, airport, you cater for time, you cater for traffic, you never cater for that an accident uh, will take place. Similarly, in the Air Force, what happens is, or anywhere, 
you make packaging you make uh, otr over target calculations you say you know this can go wrong so many aircraft can be lost to enemy actions etc etc what do you do not factor in uh, the flight safety part because we presume that people uh, will be safe and we will not lose uh, any aircraft because of accident now this surprises me because when in peace time it happens you see statistics uh, day in and day out accidents happen then why how will the war be any different now people uh, you know give an example that in war uh, you know admiral uh, will rush and the environment will be different you know etc etc my point is you need to have capability surplus in case in peace time you do not have capability surplus how will it uh, play out in the war i mean do i understand that if i can i can have an accident on driving on a empty road and i will be safer in chandni chowk while driving i mean it doesn't work i'll have to have capability surplus so that is why it is very important these days to talk about it or people to become aware aircraft are very costly yeah they you see the way rafale costs or su30 costs or you know your future amram is going to be cost not only cost what is its combat potential so tomorrow when we say uh, when you know we talk of number of squadrons and we say they have come down to 30 from 42 our chief uh, makes and uh, Uh, an appeal or uh, uh, tries to say everywhere that we are on our way to increase, but it will take some time. We all know that. So if the resources are down, okay, it's only uh, wise that we uh, preserve them. And losing aircraft in peace time is the last thing we should be doing. So I think people have to become aware of it that it does contribute to uh, operational uh, efficiency if you follow uh, safety. You know. i provide you safer environment will you be more efficient or if i provide you one safe environment will you be more efficient one just needs to uh, you know relate to that so i think uh, safety aerospace safety what we call it but for ease we can uh, call it flight safety is very very uh, important and it contributes to operational safety it does not take away from it so one of the biggest things that i notice with regards to these discussions is that every time there's there's an incident it is always termed on the age of the platform uh and that's something that comes out right at the beginning uh it is not that only indian air force is flying older aircraft even the the top end air forces in the world are still flying very old aircraft uh, if you look at the b52 in the american air force they've been flying it for uh, they just i think finished 70 years of uh, of of flight with that aircraft so It's yes. not just the Indian Air Force that flies older aircraft. It's it's about the requirement, about the availability, and stuff like that. How do you like to? Would you agree with my assessment? And uh, how do you? What what would be your comments on that, sir? No, I agree with your observation, but not uh, with the assessment. See, what happens is the age of the aircraft is something which is visible to everyone, True. in the sense that uh, it is known, and that is the fact which is publicly known and. on that people don't know anything in general i'm i'm not talking of professionals so anybody who picks up an air uh, newspaper or here is about an accident he knows that okay this aircraft is old this belongs to older generation beyond that he doesn't know much about it so it's easier to make a comment that okay this aircraft was old uh, generation you see an accident is an accident i don't know how uh, a, a, we have had accidents with modern aircraft also in last 2000s have crashed super these have crashed okay so it's not that yes number if you talk about earlier we had more mic 21s or you know more air, uh, aircraft so probably number appeared more but let's come back to the point now it a, age when we talk of it may not be totally out of place but not directly okay let me uh, tell you what happens is if there is an older plane any aircraft or any plane that gets up in the air nobody launches it with a name that it will not come back or it will uh, meet with an accident it's completely airworthy yes it is old no doubt about it but why uh, when it meets with an accident probably indirectly uh, age or technology has a role to play and why i say that because the amount of time or the amount of uh, care or you know effort in new technology Uh, demands to maintain old technology demands much more than that not that it can't be maintained you need to pay greater attention to that you know you need to today you have high end cars you drive them with eyes closed right you can't even open their engine 
you know it's only goes to the factory and comes back but you remember our ambassadors you every day had to check their oil you had to you know see uh, what is going on etc etc today they talk to you these older technologies did not talk to you the way new aircraft talk to you now what happens is if you do not pay that much attention toward their maintenance or you're in a hurry so obviously i cannot launch these machines at the same rate that i can launch uh, new aircraft at that rate or uh, the way uh, you know i need to look after this technology the way i need to employ this technology if something is wanting in that then then this machine is likely to uh, meet ill fate more often than the newer machine there's nothing wrong with the machine as such provided you fly it or employ it the way it is supposed to be done i think the problem lies there not with the machine per se so these advanced air forces when they fly older aircraft you know they had have uh, had industrial uh, uh, revolution they they have things uh, are more advanced tools technologies etc are uh, very much different you know i have been in london as a reporter seen some of the best uh, hangars and factories let me tell you there is a lot to be desired you know when initially we are improving now initially i mean 10 years back if you saw a uh, public sector hangar or you saw a uh, va system hangar there was a very uh, difference so a tornado being maintained let's say there in the uk would be very different than a big 21 uh, in india sometimes back but now with the uh, these things staining it will make a difference but just because the aircraft is old uh, it will not meet with the next gen you never launch an aircraft from that point of view absolutely sir we recently saw a pretty bad crash of an f35 so everything breaks yeah uh, absolutely yeah uh, i'd like to ask you sir what are the main reasons of accidents i mean uh, uh, i'm sure there's a huge extensive investigation that is conducted within the armed forces uh, and of course civilian authorities as well what do you think are the main broadly what are the main reasons for accidents that actually happen in flying see uh, where, uh, what is there in flying there is a human being and there is a machine so only two things can go wrong either something can go wrong with a human being while flying or something goes wrong with a machine so these are the two main reasons right in that what happens is when you come to the thing let's tackle machine first there could be a technical defect let's say if the aircraft like we say was not serviced properly again i come back nothing wrong with the aircraft i just said nothing wrong with their technology being flying but let's say if somebody i've just to give an example forward to uh, connect a wire or you know connected wires in the opposite direction or etc then it's bound to cause an accident right now uh, so technology is one part uh, secondly uh, is the human being okay what if the human being makes a mistake so let's say human error and technology or technical defects may remain the two main reasons other reasons could be are miscellaneous in nature you know bird strike or some fod ingestion or environmental factors you know like weather uh, plays a role even in weather it's not that uh, you know somebody is not making a mistake human error when we come to you know again i would say that uh, air forces i mean uh, the statistics are not public except when they uh, when some cag like you know cag report is 2014 is in public domain and there is a parliamentary report of 2004 you know which is in public domain now when you read these reports or you read cag report it uh, says the one i am referring to it says 51% uh, accidents in air force it, it typically audited the air force uh, were attributed to human error and about 48% to technical defects when you compare this with the uh, other air forces or even in civil okay civil there are reports of iata or that is you know international air transports uh, airline transports association or there is uh, ntsb national transport safety board of usa and uh, even our uh, you know civil flying this they 80% accidents are contributed to uh, human error now there is there was a study introduced by uh americans okay it's called the uh, national commission on uh, accidents on military aircraft accidents okay the report was submitted in 2020 it's there again in open domain they are somehow more open in publishing their uh, you know even military statistics uh, okay we are still a bit uh, reservist on that 
Now that report also says even in the military, and it is analyzed accidents between 2013 to 2020. The report was submitted on 1st December 20 to the president and uh, Congress, uh, U.S. Congress. You know the title of the report is 224 lives, 11.6 million dollars, uh, billion dollars, and uh, 186 aircraft lost between 2013 and 2020. And it says even in the military flying, 80 Accidents are attributed to human error. Now, don't uh, ever think that their human error is more than our human error because ours is fifty-one percent. The classic difference is that they don't have any technical difference. So, if there are hundred accidents between both our air forces, and you know, uh, or you know, if there are more technical defects uh, here, then your human error percentage will obviously come down. Because that percentage or the pie chart is being eaten up by technical defects, they probably do not have that many technical defects. Or even uh, civil aircrafts are more advanced than you know, airports uh, inventory. So because technical defects are less, so human error percentage goes up. But otherwise, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, they, it does not mean that they have more human error than we have. But human error is everywhere. So. If we say that if you are able to control human error somehow, then you will achieve two things: one, you will reduce number of accidents drastically, and also it affects morale of you know uh, people or uh, of the forces and your future employability, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this remains the biggest worry everywhere: that how do we control uh, human error uh, accident part of it? Human beings are weird machines, so that's something that is, I think, known by everybody. Uh, how do, how much does training actually come into play, sir? Because a lot of times, when you compare air forces, especially uh, with the Chinese standoff, a lot of people compare the Chinese air force with the Indian air force. And the 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 CIPRI report talks about lower standards of training of the Chinese pilots. How much does training actually play into flight safety itself, sir? Oh, a lot. I think everything is training. You know, even when we are talking of uh, pilots' decision. Okay. Uh, again, you know, there are reports that I have. A report says that it, uh, you know, within uh, about three years, accidents it saw, and it, you know, it's international global report, and he said sixty-two accidents were attributed to decision making in the air. Now, decision making cannot come without training. You know, in my uh, uh, professional and considered opinion. when a pilot you know we often say that pilot can take has to take split second decisions right you know where is that split second coming from if there is no information in the brain about that particular aspect then how are you going to take decision it's no magic you know unless we have read about something unless you are told about something unless we have rehearsed your mind only recalls the events incidentally does not create any event you you have you know trained yourself you have read about something you i mean you know how do you recall a phone number you can't invent someone's phone number you know someone has told you something you rehearse that you want to remember that so sometimes when you need to you know uh, know it you will uh, it will come to you you know in a split second but you can't invent something how so very intelligent you might be right then it's a gamble you know you are taking a gamble you say i have i no knowledge about something i say oh, either either i can do this or i can they do that i take a gamble if it works out well if it doesn't work out bad but it's not a considered it's not a professional decision training is very important and you know for quite some time i think we have suffered from non availability of simulators okay we did not uh, any time uh, you know get a simulator or got a simulator along with it Mirage two thousand was the first ever, uh, you know, worldwide simulator which came. It wasn't a full motion, but it was very good. We all uh, flew that, and you could, uh, you know, really just about practice uh, everything in that uh, simulator. Now, uh, in the absence of simulators, it was difficult to tell people that how to avoid certain situations. You know, you have to train someone that crossing red light is a bad idea. Can you do that in? Uh, actual traffic you can't you can only tell him that okay don't do that okay but if there was a simulator let's say traffic simulator and you tell him that you take chances and he has to see that 10 out of 10 attempts maybe eight nine times he can cross it but one time he'll get caught that is what needs to uh, 
uh, be told right and that is what will make an impression so similarly these even when human error takes place mind you nobody when i say nobody means majority don't meet with an accident the first time it is there you know when they start doing something wrong their belief gets vindicated you know uh, like uh, people uh, do wrong things they come the wrong way they cross red lights they they have been saving themselves one day they'll get caught now that is bad enough okay so training is important and what we are talking what we uh, you know talking to people and telling them the right perspective about it you know that why uh, why you need to uh, make allowance for that and why you need to continuously think that uh, this is a threat looming you know incidentally uh, there are a lot of improvements in training you know civil uh, airlines have done very well in that because they are more uh, corporate in nature and they adopt uh, new procedures very quickly uh threat terror management is something they deal with now i even we when i was last week we had introduced this and i used to tell people that you have to uh, uh expect a contingency with respect to a threat not as an emergency you know the very word emergency gives you a feeling it may happen it may not happen mm. you know it's an emergency you know i say engine failure after take off is an emergency it's listed in emergency plan so subconsciously it may give you a feeling that it's an emergency it may not happen but if i say it's a threat threat is always there you no know, threat of a thief is always there you always lock your door right so it's not an emergency or a contingency it is a threat so something going wrong in the aircraft is a threat now and they have started identifying that how many types of threats can present themselves in a simple flying from place a to b and now they are you know uh, taught about that that how to manage those threats be ahead of the aircraft or be ahead of the curve uh, uh, when you say and when something goes wrong and how do you uh, get or how do you tackle that please that's interesting so i want to ask you i mean training is of course paramount and the more people train the more understanding they will have of their machine that they're flying and which also builds a certain amount of confidence uh that confidence goes sideways as well sir so there's there's a you know there's a, there's a the other side of it as well how do you keep people from being becoming overconfident about something oh. and absolutely. keeping their, their wits together sir absolutely no no this is this is very important because uh sometimes back when we were young sirs we were told that when you have about 500 to 1000 hours is the time to watch out because that is when you are just getting enough hold of the aircraft and you are becoming confident about it you know you think you can do uh, something uh, you know j- just like that or you can take a, a shortcut and do things okay aviation is something it is not natural it is not built in naturally for you it's a specific activity okay so when you do something and every time you do it right every time you do it right you tend to uh, people tend to feel that they are doing it right not because of they followed right procedure but they are doing it right because they are capable of doing it right anyway so moment they lose sight of that procedure which was making them do the things right they get caught and people at senior level have got caught you know people at any time can get caught so we emphasize training again comes here important that every time you do something every time you have to go through the same procedures you know it's like uh, you know but, uh, undertaking a flight is like a life cycle you know every time you have to prepare i mean in a normal life let's say uh, take the case of a pregnancy you know you have a first child or second child or third child your preparation for the child or your precautions for the child or your uh, medical requirement for the child exactly remain the same you just don't become over confident in that ever and if you make a mistake it will bound to uh, get into disaster so in flight also we say every time you may have had thousands of flights in the similar circumstances same route same everything but every flight has to be treated afresh a new as if you are doing it for the first time now this is not being under confident this is just being procedurally correct and or professional about it the only definition of being professional or professionalism in my opinion is just doing your thing the right way you know moment you do it right way invariably your chances of succeeding are uh, much higher 
rather than uh, you know taking it by so people just have to understand that things happen right because you do them the right way not because you are a maverick and some of your magic is making them happen right indeed sir as a matter of fact you know uh, sadly speaking this particular crash came just about one year after uh, cds general bipin rawat also lost his life in a very tragic yes. accident uh, along with his wife and his his uh, his staff and that was something which was very you know i think it hit a nerve to a lot of people that this was a brand new helicopter that just went guy up in the middle of the mountain carrying the the senior most the highest ranking military officer in india uh i i am not wanting to get into why that accident happens sir but is there a certain amount of um, i won't call it risk taking but i would call it chance taking to achieve a certain goal uh which is part of any any profession i mean you do take a, a step extra to kind of try and break away the fold so that you can actually see uh, uh what is there beyond uh the 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 first supersonic flight for that matter charles sakega also broke a barrier of sorts uh there were people that said he won't come back there were people when when the first space flight happened there were people said they won't come back so flying has evolved because of chance taking as well uh how does this fit into the accident game is uh, in in a, in a complete paradigm sir absolutely see what happens is the examples we have given now we have to draw a very uh, clear distinction between uh, things which are experimental in nature yeah you know mistakes will take place unless you take chances unless you go walk that extra mile you won't know we are talking of something which has been walked past thousands of times no an error should not take place there you know uh, when something was not there you were inventing it you didn't know how this is done you know experimental flights are uh, known to uh, fail okay but we are talking of something which has been done day in and day out you know there is no risk taking involved there because procedures are set you are you know what more can be done uh, in for a particular flight what is laid down your aircraft category is laid down that what kind of aircraft it should be pilots category is laid down kind of experienced pilots must have their currency is laid down weather minima are laid down the route is laid down the route should have been flown first the there is a plethora of procedures which is laid down okay now there is nothing more experimental in that okay the now it just has to be done the right way why mistake the place like you said you know we will uh, it's a air force uh, uh, matter uh, they i'm sure would have drawn the lessons and uh, club if they uh, plug if there were any holes uh, there but uh, let's talk about uh, civil life mean, we can talk more freely about that you you remember the accidental related accidents you know of uh, andhra pradesh uh, chief minister okay we lost madhavra sindhya we lost okay so their inquiry report is in public i mean you know dgca very uh, clearly blame uh, weather for that that weather was bad and they somehow decided to continue there is a very famous uh, american basketball player you know toby barrel i think is okay brian okay toby brian uh, toby brian he was uh, traveling with his family some 11 people his own daughter to watch a uh, basketball game and the skoski aircraft he was traveling in uh, landed up on hill side in foggy conditions so all these pilots were very experienced they now what kind of you know commitment or they had they you know what happens is that weather interpretation uh, or you know uh, how do you interpret weather how it engulfs it's a continuous uh, study uh, there is it's very easy to take decision in black and white condition you know let's say if there is a thick wall of cloud you can't go zero visibility it's uh, you know no go situation these are somewhere shades of gray in between you know go no go you know can go can't go etc sense of commitment is there etc etc and i have seen nobody forces you to do anything it's a self uh, proclaimed kind of you know uh, requirement uh, enforced on people that i have to do this even in cds case uh, i am pretty sure he would have had no compulsion given to the pilot that this has to be done 
or you know if uh, or even these politicians i don't know i can't say they have much more at stake but if the pilots was pilots were to clearly tell them that you know this uh, cannot happen or we will not be able to make it uh, then it will be different story now let me just come to the flip side of it you know here there needs to be a majority from the other side also like you know what what will happen take a case uh, if i am uh, the consumer you know i have an aircraft i have a chartered aircraft i tell someone that you know i need to go from a to b that guy watches the weather he sees situation he says sir i don't think we can go i said okay uh, leave it let me take another guy and like i said invariably he make it off so you get vindicated that you know uh, he was just talking to his head actually see we came in so what happens is over a period of time even people build in uh, you know no notions that probably things can be done that you you will never be able to precisely say whether it's a go or no go you are you are calculating chances and since it involves life if there are not hundred percent chances of it going through, or even if there is an iota of doubt, then you don't uh, undertake that mission. Even if uh, you know you were to play out in simulator, and even if it was to be proven that you know maybe seven out of ten times it could go through, but three times is bad enough. That is why the accident safe distance. That's what the rate is all about. You know, every flight that gets safe one doesn't turn into an accident, but when it does, people have that feeling that you know. Uh, it can go through when there are you know many examples we can talk about where people have fallen prey to that feeling that earlier they had done similar things many a times and uh, once one time they got caught yeah the common saying is kitni bari kar raha hai kuch nahi hua is bari kaise ho gaya yes yes right. exactly uh, you know uh, th- this reminds me of that aircraft crash that happened in mangalore on that table top uh, runway where the pilot probably landed a little too far off into the runway and then could not stop the aircraft in very raining raining conditions uh, a lot of people i mean my father being a flyer himself asked the first why didn't he go around you know that's something which is a very simple thing you can't do it go around take another shot if you're not able to yeah. land in that place land somewhere else it's not they're not cutting it out of your tanka so what's the problem and so is that also that's a very human tendency i guess and it's i don't think that has anything specifically to do with pilots uh but how do you kind of brush that off pilots sir because it's a very natural human tendency you know like let's do it it'll, it'll happen how do you edge it off pilots because that's that's the gap that you're talking about at the end of it sir yeah yeah you see not only uh, uh, mangalore crash i mean uh, similar accident we had a kochi you know uh, crash where we lost the pilots but uh, Out of all 19 people died, you know, in the most short period of time, as well as well as Bangalore crash, but similar crash. Okay, now why I need to club these two? Because in both the cases, the approaches were unsettled. You know, they clearly demanded a go-round uh, decision that you know pilots must go round. But they somehow had a feeling that they will be able to uh, hack it. Either it is the uh, some kind of ego which comes in, you know, or uh, trying to prove that no, I will be able to uh, do it again. Training comes in here. You know, people have to be told that uh, you, uh, you know, you you have to do the right thing. And sometimes the subconscious peer pressure, you know, that something has happened, someone else has been able to land in that weather ahead of me. You know, somebody else has uh, done that. so you also want to say or you know let's say if it so happens it's a commercial it was a commercial aviation we don't know the background of other things let's say that pilot uh, decides he takes very safe decision every time lands up at uh, another airport which costs the company you know uh, putting 200 people in hotel over its stay arranging another aircraft etc so he subconsciously starts feeling that uh, why am i doing every time i am i the only guy doing this because someone else is taking chance okay so subconsciously it may play on his mind that you know no 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 i can't die i must try and make it uh, here you know uh, i would say absolutely false uh, you know sense of commitment okay because uh, like you said nothing more important than life and the life people have put in your hands you see i mean it's amazing that the people who travel i mean we have traveled and civil travel you you are simply signing off your life in the hands of that pilot right <laughs> that you know you have no control over it i mean even if i want to take you know i travel in a taxi if the driver is unsafe i can tell him stop park on the side i'll get off take another one you can't do that in an airplane okay <laughs> i mean you 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 are designed right so that is the responsibility that pilot has 
I mean, he really has to understand that. You know, that so many people, it's not my ego or my, uh, uh, you know, uh, not me alone or whatever. It's the uh, fate of so many people you are carrying uh, with you. And if time permits, I'll just uh, narrate to, uh, you know, excellent similar situations, you know, which actually, uh, which warranted a uh, clear go round, but uh, uh, people uh, uh, did not uh, do that for some reason or the other. Okay. Now, two things can be done. One is the training and one is the company policies, you know, uh, clear company policies that, okay, you will, you know, uh, your approach is unsettled. Let's say even if I'm able to land, I, I believe they've started doing now, but if that approach was not okay, I think that you need equal sacking even then. You know, uh, if I'm habitual of landing out of unsettled approach or, you know, something like that, even if it's a successful landing, uh, it should be taken very seriously and they do that. You know? I, they know every approach is monitored and every decision of the pilot is monitored with uh, advanced in, uh, uh, avionics, but you do land up with people uh, like that. Uh, sometimes. So on the on a final note, I mean, uh, I, I, it'll be interesting to learn about certain accidents and some learnings that we've actually had uh, no, in the yeah. Air Force, any uh, other Air Force or civilian aircraft, anyone, sir. Because yeah, I, I'll uh, use this opportunity to put across, you know, whatever is my point of view. You see, what happens is there is one uh, very, I mean, uh, whoever listens to this, young pilots or even experienced pilots. You know, there is a uh, uh, phenomenon or there is a feeling, uh, you know, this famous saying, to err is human. Even uh, when people write uh, reports of accidents, they say, to err is human, human error will take place. There is, a, there is a very subtle difference in this. I think this to err is human is a expression coined in 18th century. You know, uh, there was no aviation probably then. Or things were not that bad. And it was to encourage people that do something here, yeah, doesn't matter if a mistake happens. But what I feel is now, to err is human must act as a warning to people that to err is human. So be careful about that. I mean, human being can make a mistake. Okay. And it is not to legitimize uh, a mistake that mistakes will happen. Mistakes will happen, no doubt about it. I mean, no one is God. After all, we are human beings. But you can't start a project with a premise that mistakes will happen to err a human, then you are not fully prepared. Then you are hiding behind that subconscious assurance that never mind if a mistake takes place. I mean, to a resume. Okay, you have to start a project with hundred uh, percent. You know, with full uh, what do you call uh, preparation that you will not allow a uh, mistake to happen. And then if it happens on the way, uh, you know, it, it's uh, just tough luck. Okay, but your preparation must be complete. What happens is the when mistakes happen, how people decide. I mean, quickly, uh, you know, how human error takes place. There is a I uh, recently wrote a piece in, on human error. You know, there are some behavioral sciences or psychology, aviation psychology. I talked about. You you take that Air France accident over Atlantic. You know, uh, it's amazing. From you know very high altitude, it just came crashing down into Atlantic. For two years, they actually did not find anything, and then uh, submarine in 2011 found out the black box, etc. And to what they realized, what they came to know that the pilot, you know, there was a storm. It was going from uh, Brazil to Paris. The On the Atlantic, storm, you know, is an uh, airspeed indicator storm functioning. So they disconnected autopilot. The uh, less experienced pilot took over controls and there is a side stick in Airbus. This was Airbus 330. He just moved the side stick back and the angle of attack, uh, you know, kept rising and the aircraft continued stalling, descending. The point I want to make, the stall warning light came 75 times in four and a half minutes. 75 times, which is supposed to alert you even one stall warning means people should uh, sit up. Okay. In this aircraft, it came 75 times and ignored. Preoccupied or, you know, just first impression that airspeed is not working and experienced pilots. You see, and almost 228 some lives uh, lost. Okay, you must have heard of that Pakistan uh, airliner which crashed into the residential area in Karachi. Okay, it's a one and a half hours flight from Lahore to Karachi, and fully serviceable aircraft experienced pilots. Okay, he's flying at level three four zero, comes into uh, you know Karachi area, asks for descent to level one five zero fifteen thousand feet. They clear him, but he does not descend for some reason. Three minutes he continues, which is about forty kilometers. 
With the result, he lands a very high end approach. Now he does not descend even too fast. Does not use his flight management system properly. And finally, you know, he is descending at the rate of six thousand feet per minute, whereas the normal is one thousand feet per. Minute. I mean, it's six times the high. You are talking of Bangalore or something. This is six thousand feet, six times more than the normal rate of descent. In the bargain, they forget to over under carriage, and they can't correlate with their. Uh, you know speed and now he touches down on the uh, engines he realized that engines are scrapping so he goes around wants to make another approach by the time he has lost both the engines and uh, you know he cannot hold high and he cuts short circuit draws everything but uh, land uh, you know lands up uh, into the residential area killing everyone now point is there are uh, you can't continue with an approach under those conditions you know there is a feeling that you were talking of you know over confidence and you see the rt there is rt on the youtube of this guy we are comfortable on approach i mean it's a very calm rt call as if there is no uh, emergency on that okay and um, lastly when you say i mean you know, the, the movie was made on that uh, you know incident of kochi that runway 3 4 what they call okay though a dramatic uh, effect But that's another uh, example. The whole world of people are, pers- you know, perplexed that why did one end up doing what he uh, did? Seven approaches uh, he made. Uh, if you have time, I can say it in two minutes. You know, these please, please, guys, please, absolutely. Okay, <laughs> they got even from Doha. The previous day they flew on from Kochi to Doha. So it's again, you know, they it's a uh, they they come back uh, to Karachi. Um, uh, I'm yeah, sorry, Kochi airfield from Doha. Okay, they uh, take off, and now what? What he uh, does is everything. He's taken a lot of fuel, some sixteen thousand eight hundred kgs fuel. Uh, he one hundred kgs he has taken more than required. Bangalore is his uh, uh, legitimate diversion from Kochi. Everything set. Now when they are getting into Kochi, the weather has started turning bad. Okay. so he decides to make one approach for kochi runway 27 and comes short on you know runway he does not side the runway goes wrong you know now first go wrong then he makes another approach ilas approach for 27 does not side the runway cloud base is lowering in the meanwhile again goes wrong second comes third time he again does not make contact with the runway in between there are two aircraft which have gone around Uh, because of bad weather, because they have not been able to land. One Air India Express and one Kuwait Airline. ATC informs him that two aircraft have gone around. When he is making third approach, he says, "Okay, if I do not, uh, you know, I am not able to land of this approach, then I will divert." In the meantime, what has happened is his diversion fuel to Bangalore is some figure, some three thousand three hundred kgs. Because he wants to make more approaches at uh, Kochi, he changes his diversion to Trivandrum, which required less fuel. Even though Trivandrum had not the same weather, does not have the same navigates. First officer tells him that you know I don't think we should be going to Trivandrum. Bangalore is a better uh, place. But now he is run out of the chance because he has made extra approaches at Kochi and he does not have fuel. When third time also he goes around, now he sets course for uh, Kochi. At Kochi, the visibility is dropped to uh, at uh, Trivandrum. Sorry, the visibility is dropped to fifteen hundred meters, whereas he requires for the viewer approach. Uh, 2,100 meters. Now he asks uh, ATC, "Do you have high intensity lights so that I can, you know, use greater visibility?" They do not have. That. Their ILS is under maintenance, which was known. So he comes and makes an VOR approach, fourth approach, over Trivandrum runway is one four. He again does not sight the runway, goes round fifth time. Okay, fourth time here again makes an approach for one four, does not contact, no contact with the runway, goes round. Six time he comes again. No contact goes on. No, he has declared few emergency. Okay, because he is uh, getting rather low. Six time when he goes around, his fuel is so low that he does not probably think as a time to go around and come back again. So he says that okay, let me continue and do a reverse landing on three two. So runway actually he landed was on three two. Now I think all those guys are destined to live because when he made that approach for three two, you know what has happened. He was flying low. His ground proximity warning system has come on, and the co-pilot has disabled it. Bank angle has come on because he is maneuvering, uh, you know, very harshly. 
but he has come on opposite and uh, his first stocks are asked him it's there on uh, record I mean YouTube that where are we going where are we so the captain says just going blindly now just going blindly means he doesn't know where it is it's not that he closed his eyes what they show in the movie so it is sheer luck that very close with some maneuvering he lands up on the run when they switched off they had 349 kgs fuel it's 50 kgs per minute consumption on the aircraft okay so i mean people are just uh, wondering that what uh, made him do all this that he uh, did it, it's a psychology study so people i think what we need in our training now rather than just teaching procedures and trainings and this etc you need to make people aware that whenever they took this decision or whenever they made mistakes why did they do that because purpose of any inquiry should not be to apportion any blame because i am again of uh, firm belief that anyone who makes mistake does not intentionally do that there are violations you know there are there are violations but uh, you know uh, they're far and few you know in fact people that tend up end up taking risk they don't even know is a risk you know they think it's a, a normal way of uh, uh, doing things okay so uh, people need to read these accidents or uh, this thing you know more uh, with these kind of things in mind and my recommendation is like you know we do not have any study or any board you know which looks at these accidents comprehensively you know like if you want to the aib does what to job they taken out every accident mentioned that you know dgc used to do it. but if in one click you want to find out okay how many human error accidents you can do you will probably have to go through every one list it yourself and see take out percentage whereas there should be an official uh, authority to it okay and uh, since we are winding up coming back to from where you started operational efficiency i think we just joined the dots and safety people youngsters or air force or people need to understand that see they say unless you you know uh, in operations certain things may be required you know like we say in peace time tomorrow a uh, mission has to be launched i mean i may have to take certain risk i would draw an analogy that like uh, you know when you have to do those things in operations there will be additional precautions put in place environment will be created for you in the sense you see on the road okay crossing red light is an offense we say you should not cross red light we say you should not uh, drive opposite but all of us do see ambulance crossing red light or a fire tender crossing red light okay do we call it a violation does it meet with an accident why not because it creates an environment around itself you know it has got those motors which everyone understands it has got those sirens it has got a purpose it is uh, you know doing it with a purpose and moment i hear a siren i feel day i i create an environment for that guy to go through the red light safely or to go in the opposite lane safely similarly tomorrow if there is an operation and we have to launch a pilot in a little say lesser visibility than uh, rating permits because it's an operational requirement trust you me i will create an environment for him air force that he is not left all by himself there will be additional aids put across there will be people uh, wanting you know waiting for him i will on a runway like this you know i will put 10 people in a row uh, firing row very cartridges telling him where is the runway you know things like that which does not happen in a normal day to day uh, life okay so when it comes to operations when people have to take decisions due care will be taken and uh, we will be able to undertake operations but what we are talking of is day to day you know when we can save these precious assets and lives uh, we should take uh, due care uh, that we pay due attention to this particular aspect because we are losing more aircraft in peace than uh, in war that's a very strong statement sir i must say this has been a educational episode for me because this is this quite technical but uh, it does impact a certain thought process that we have about our indian air force because we do see accidents happening and we are not able to explain to ourselves why these accidents happen uh as as free running uh civilian analysts a lot of people say a lot of things but uh, a reality check whether when it comes from somebody who's actually handled this particular game does give a lot of reassurance and a lot of understanding if not reassurance as to what exactly happens in this game and i think with this episode a lot of people are going to get that 
uh, sir, thank you very much. Honor and privilege to actually host you again on the platform on various different subjects. You're also a flyer, so I would like to, you know, bug you for a little more information about our current programs and our future programs and stuff like that. So I hope this is a relationship that we can move forward. On that note, sir, thank you so much for doing the preparation, taking out the time, and explaining it in such simple words, so that us non-technical people would be able to understand. Thank you so much, and no, till next time. Thank you for introducing me. Thank you so much. Bye.